resume recording. Um, so first, I would like to talk about schedule of this week. Um, so uh, this week, um, so today we'll finish our back propagation, and uh, uh, on Friday we'll learn how do we code this. So both coding from scratch and using the the PyTorch AutoGrad interface. Um, and also like uh, not only we want to build a, a neural network from scratch by ourselves, uh, we should be oh my god we should be this also is able how inadequate uh, he is to like PyTorch like mm -hmm. build in no because he's gonna realize Walt sample is the most pure uh, thing that he's ever witnessed neural network um, say it again. <sighs> Never mind. Sorry, did someone? Um... That's very useful information. Well, I should let you do that. Say anything or no? Okay. Um. So um, it's like building Lego. Um. And uh, uh, so, uh, and on Friday we'll learn how to code it. So let's review. First, review what we had. Um, so we had a three-layer neural network. Um, the uh, first is the input layer. So we have the input is a two by one vector. So a vector of two input here got transformed to this a three by one vector. Okay. So this three by one vector got activated by an activation function, then send it to the output layer, which um, like uh, these um. three by one vector got transformed to a one by one vector, which is the scalar. And this is our model's output. And our model is trying to, you know, to approximate something. So, and last time we learned that if we write down explicitly, this is what uh, uh, our model's output looks like. This is the input and the input multiply with the weight matrix plus a bias. And F is our nonlinear activation function Then multiply another weight matrix plus a bias and we get the output, okay? So um, what happens is what happens is uh, um, then we take. Uh, then we uh, consider this uh, loss function. So the loss function is characterizing the difference between our model's output and our true value. So this is our model's output, and this is our true value. And we taking square mainly is because for differentiability we can use absolute value, but absolute value looks like this. So this point is not differentiable, and we want to we want to avoid that i mean using absolute value is not like a hundred percent not okay it, it is okay but uh, uh using this function uh making our loss smoother and our goal is to use gradient descent to minimize this one so to use gradient descent we have to know gradient first which is uh, this and last time we learned the first one is uh, um, so this is uh, this is our so this is partial L partial B two is the partial derivative with respect to um, the bias from the second layer. And then last time we learned, how do we take derivative of this guy? So, uh, which is, we use chain rule, okay? And, uh, um, and last time we derived, this is our, um, this is basically our derivative, okay? 
So let me draw the network again. Um, so W2 is a weight matrix here. And uh, um, what happens is, what happens is um, we have, this is a scalar. So this is a scalar and this one. So A2, A2 is nothing but the output from the second layer. It's a three by one vector. Okay, so this one is a three by one vector. And because W is a three by one, like matrix or whatever. So, um, our dimension is consistent. So, All right. So if we have a function, it's if we have a scalar function and we are taking derivative with respect to a three by one matrix and we will get a, a three by one like matrix. So now it's consistent. Okay, so now let's uh, next. So next is we try to take derivative of an earlier layer. So now this is where the tricky part begins. And uh, let's review, uh, let's review what our L is. Our L is Y hat subtract Y square. Okay. And back propagation chain rule. So we take a uh, derivative of our outer function first. And for the outer function, only this has to do with B1. So this is like a constant when we take in derivative with respect to B1. So what we have here is uh, uh, two times Y hat subtract Y times partial Y hat partial B1. Okay. So, but if we review what uh, we review what uh, our y is. So y is like a uh, y has several layers. So let let me just copy paste this. So this is our y hat. All right. Um, and our b one. Our B1 is right here. All right. So what happens is we want to rewrite. We want to rewrite this thing as, first of all, we know that this guy is our A2, okay? So we rewrite it as W2 multiply with a vector A2 plus B2. So now let's continue. And let me uh, just um, make a box out of it so that uh, it's like uh, we plug in this into this formula and then we will get So we take derivative of uh, y hat and y hat, we use this ex expression. And the only thing that has B1 is this term. Okay, so we ignore this term now. So the second bias doesn't matter. And uh, we have this term, all right? So what happens is, what happens is uh, um, we multiply with, our weight matrix. So it's like taking derivative of this guy. So this is chain rule. Let me let me write down more explicitly. So it is a partial W two A two 
partial A2 and then multiply with partial A2, partial B1, okay? So this is chain rule. This is exactly chain rule. We take derivative of this with respect to this, but we have some intermediate function or intermediate layer right here. So now for this one, it's quite straightforward. What happens is uh, we have Basically, um, this is like a scalar and this is like a, a vector. So for example, if this is a one by three row matrix, so, so W2 is like uh, something like, uh, something like this. So W2 one, um, one, W2, one, two, and W2, one, three. So it's a one by three matrix. Okay. And when we take its derivative, it becomes a three by one matrix. So we take derivative of, uh, uh, of this term, like we had earlier. So for example, here, so it's exactly this term. So let me copy and paste this term here. All right. And then basically we consider this and this. So what we get here will be basically this term, this term, and this term. So we take derivative with respect to A2 and we will get this term, this term, and this term. So it's like a component wise thing. So we have first component is W1. I think I only use W1. Okay. And we have W1, 2, W2, 2, and W3, 2. And because after we take the derivative, we want to make the dimension consistent. So we make it uh, transpose. This transpose is just for um, making this one by three matrix, same dimension with our A2, okay? Just keep this in mind that um, if we have a scalar function and we take derivative with respect to a vector, the derivative, the gradient should have the same shape, or say, same dimension with that vector. And now we multiply. So uh, we keep this. Uh... Again, okay. Now what is interesting is, now what is interesting for the next derivative we have is A2. So we want to basically, we want to compute this guy. So uh, A2, B1. This one is tricky. Why I'm saying it's tricky is because A2 has been composed with a like a non-differentiable function. So right here is, um, it's partial, partial B1. Of 
F, the first weight matrix, multiply with our input plus B1. Okay. So B1 is right, right here, and we want to take partial derivative there. But the first we have to go through this F. All right. And how do we do it? It's a uh, So F, let's um, say F of uh, U here is, is U when U is greater than zero. And uh, when uh, it's zero, when U is less than or greater than zero, if we plot the graph of this function, so it's something like this, and it's not differentiable here. And how do we take care of it is uh, using the definition of a weak derivative. It's pretty much like uh, the weak derivative agrees with the real derivative except at one point. And that one point, we just, we don't care. All right. Um, like uh, we have a discontinuous derivative. I mean, that's okay. So, uh, so for example, right here, so f prime of u, it then, so this is in the weak sense, and uh, please refer to the homework so we can verify if it tests against the smooth function, it's, it's fine. So then uh, we just say it's okay. And now we just plug in this uh, back here. So back here, we take derivative of that. So, um, which equals, if, whoops. So if, um, A2 has certain component less than or equal to zero, then that component is zero, okay? So, but if it's positive, if it's positive, if, if A2 is positive, then it means um, basically what we have here is one. So, so it's like a partial F, partial um, V2 times partial Z2 partial B1, okay? So let's recall what's, uh, what's A2. So A2 is F of uh, Z2. And Z is, Z is this guy, basically. This is our Z2. So how, how do we, how do we uh, compactly uh, express um, this is as simple as if Z is um, greater than zero, then this is uh, this is a one. So um, so if Z is greater than zero, this is one. If Z is less than zero, this is zero for that component. And what we can do 
is we simply we write element wise like uh, notation that is uh, so this is a element wise so this is an element wise notation and I'm going to use this so this is element wise product. So for example, so the example of this notation, so this is, uh, this is an element wise indicator. So for example, if, uh, if, uh, if Z2 equals minus one, one, and uh, let's say minus two, then this one, Z2 greater than zero, this will be uh, one, okay. Uh, let, let me, this is not good. So let me use uh, uh, two. So it will be uh, one, zero, zero. All right. So it's an indicator of whether Z is greater than zero or not. And then it's, the indicator is this guy, is this guy. So it, if, it's a, if it's greater than zero, it's one in that component. If it's less or equal to zero, it's zero in that component. And lastly, we take derivative of this one. And what is this? This is nothing but, uh, so uh, this is, uh, we write it down. So it's partial, partial B1 of uh, W1, A1 plus B1 vector. Okay. And uh, let's look at this. So B1 is nothing but a, uh, uh, B1 is just right here. So we're taking derivative of, of, uh, of this term essentially because this has nothing to do with uh, B1. So now we take derivative of this one, we get our final answer because we take derivative of a vector of itself. This is like, uh, so for example, let me demonstrate what happens here is, uh, so for example, in the first component, okay, um, let me put a, a box here. So this is the example. So example. And this example is for that. And now the last thing is we just take a derivative of this. It's no verify, it's an identity matrix. So it's overall, it's just this guy greater than zero um, multiply with an identity matrix. And this is element wise multiplication, but it's totally fine. I mean, so essentially we'll get, uh, we just get this. So it's an indicator vector of uh, which component is greater than zero. And now let's uh, plug in back. So this is uh, A2, B2. Oh, A to B1, my bad. And now let's plug in all the way back right here. So uh, this one, let's plug in all the way back uh, here. Um, which is here. So essentially we have our 
partial L partial B1 is 2 y hat subtract y times the output, oh, sorry, this is W. So W2 transpose. So somewhere here. Um, so this is uh, this is our W two. Let me add. So this is our W two and uh, uh, transpose. Okay. So now we have W two transpose and times the indicator vector of whether Z is positive or not. And this is a uh, element wise product. So it's something like, uh, let me give you guys an example. So if, uh, if W2 is, is like, uh, for example, uh, point, let's say point one, point two, uh, minus point five, and uh, Z2 is the vector I just wrote. It's two minus one minus two. Then uh, W2 transpose element wise product with this guy is basically, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2 minus 0 0.5 element wise product with one zero zero so and then we will get point one point zero point zero so we only only the second oh i'm sorry only the first component left because only that component is greater than zero so the rest has nothing to do uh, with the derivative anymore so this is our derivative for um for the bias of the first layer. The last one, okay, so the last one. So the last one is uh, partial L partial W uh, one. So, Again, the dimension check is if for a parameter, so what shape this parameter has, what shape its derivative should have. For example, this the first bias in the, the bias in the first layer is a three by one vector. Then its derivative should be a three by one vector. And the same thing here, um, this one, this one transforms so this one transform a two by one vector to a three by one vector. So it transform a two dimensional vector to a three dimensional vector, which means it is uh, nothing but uh, something like this. So it's uh, a three by, uh, so three by two matrix. So because W1 is like a transform matrix that transform the input, which is a two dimensional vector to a three dimensional vector living on the hidden layer. So let me draw this a diagram again. So this is our first layer, second layer, last layer. And uh, a two by one vector got transformed to a three by one vector, then the three by one vector got transformed to a one by one vector. And I mean, this is essentially, so if we write down all these mathematical operation uh, explicitly, it's not uh, that mysterious of all those neural networks. Um, so let me put this a little bit up. Okay. And now let's compute this one. 
the, com the computation of the derivative of W1 is exactly the same with the computation with bias up until the last step. So we can essentially, we can copy down right here, sorry. So we can copy down right here up until this step. So this is the, the bias, but now um, we compute against the W, the weight matrix. So we can copy, this is, um, so this is uh, two, uh, Y hat subtract Y, um, partial A2, uh, partial Okay. Um, I think it's a three, right? Um, let me check. Um, so this is a two and the W a two, why yes, W A two is that and uh, um, oh A three of course. Okay. So uh, that's right. Um so this equals two y hat subtract y times partial partial w one and a two is nothing but uh, um oh wait my bad this is y hat So um, my bad, this is y hat. And the y hat is um, partial, partial W1 and W2, A2 plus B2. So again, um, only this term has something to do with W1, not this term, so we can simplify. So this is, so I'm gonna, go through this pro procedure real quick. So we have W2 and uh, um, a transpose. So it's partial A2, partial W1, okay. And A2 is then, So A2 is then partial, partial W1. It's an activation function of W1 A1 plus B1, okay. And now we take derivative of the outer layer, we'll get this indicator function, which we uh, had earlier right here. So, um... So we have, this is um, y hat subtract y times W2 transpose element wise product with Z2, whether Z2 is greater than zero or not. The last term is Z2. So this is our Z2 partial W. Okay. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, and again, whether to check whether we have taken the derivative correctly is uh, um, so um, let me use. Keep, let's keep this in mind. This is the three by one vector, okay? And uh, um, our derivative should be a three by two matrix. So this one, after multiply with this one, somehow we should get a three by two matrix. 
So how do we get that is, uh, um, is this one should be a one like by two matrix. So we do matrix multiplication, uh, we should get uh, like a, a matrix. So let's do it. But um, let's still write down explicitly of what happens. Okay. So for example, Z2, Z2 is basically W1, which is a matrix. So this is W1 matrix of, uh, of A1. Okay. So for example, the first row, the first row is, uh, so the first row is W1, one, A1, okay. The second row is W2, two, A1. And the third row is W3, two, A1. If we wanna take derivative of a vector against a matrix, is like we take derivative of this matrix on its each component. So what happens is something like, So W Z two W one is we just gonna take each component. So we have partial W one of this little W one vector. So this is a matrix and this is a vector. So first layer, first vector. The matrix. The matrix, okay, so the matrix. Um, the second component, the matrix. The third component, and what I want to emphasize is so it's like a taking derivative. So this vector has only something to do with this is the first row. So this is, for example. Um, So for example, let me rewrite this using, so this is the first row. It's like first row, second row, and third row. Okay. When we take derivative of a matrix, so for example, if we have this, this has nothing to do, the first row has nothing to do with the second row which means we take derivative of this inner, this like an inner product. So inner product. All these components are gonna be just zero, okay? So overall, we should only get what happens is, so it is as if, we only take this because when we take derivative of a matrix against one of its row, so this is only the first row. It has nothing to do with the second and third row. So when we take derivative, we only are taking derivative with respect to the first row. So the same thing happens for the second row. This is one, two, one, three. 
I think I uh, missed this component for a bit. This is one, one. This is one dot with one. Okay. And now finally we get our uh, like uh, output. It's like a, a stacked. So it's like a stacking of uh, so a one and a one and a one. Okay. So it, it's like a stacked uh, vector of, uh, uh, of A1. So this is like uh, something like this. So this is a uh, three and this is two. And now let's look at the last. So by the way, this is element wise. Um, this is element-wise multiplication again. So we have a three by one matrix, and this component is something like something like this. Okay. So overall, let me copy down. So overall, it's like, uh, um, so lastly, we have this term. So this term is a three by two matrix, which is like, uh, which is like this. And this is a three by one factor. And we have something like that. And this number is multiplied with every number here. All right, so this number is multiplied with every number here. And this number is multiplied with every number here. So it is as if, it is as if the same thing. So uh, it is the same thing as, so D two greater than zero, this element wise multiplication is actually the same thing as this product, this matrix, like, um, how do we say, the, uh, the outer product, okay, which is uh, A1. So this is, a, this is a row, this is a column vector, sorry. So this is a column vector and uh, this is a row vector, okay? So the row vector is being multiplied. So this is a three by one vector and this is one by two vector. And overall we will get a three by two matrix. But uh, to keep our notation consistent, we still use uh, uh, this element wise notation. So except the first one, Every single derivative we had right here are element-wise, like uh, notation. So, for example, um, for example, in the previous one we had a similar, which is uh, this is uh, this is element-wise multiplication. Okay, and uh, uh, in the B one, okay, so element-wise multiplication. So except, except the first layer, every single layer after the first layer, the derivative we had will be uh, something like that, okay? So to summarize, so to summarize, we have this formula that is, um, If we have many layers, so for example, if we have many layers, so from this layer to this layer to this layer, first layer, second layer, 
third layer, fourth layer. So if we have many layers, um, we have this simplified formula that is, um, that is partial L, partial W L layers is, uh, is delta, okay? So this is a vector of uh, L plus first layer and, uh, um, and this is element wise product with the activation on the L layer. And where this uh, delta of L plus one layer um, is defined by, um, we have the L plus one layer transpose. So it's defined in a recursive fashion. Uh, what we have, uh, let me let me use L. So and this uh, the L layer is. Uh, the L layers weight matrix times the L plus one layers delta and uh, element wise product with the activation function, okay, F prime of, of the L layer. So, and F prime is basically indicator function. So, basically, this one. So this one right here is the indicator vector, indicator vector of this. And keep this in mind, they are all element wise product. Except the first one is uh, matrix vector multiplication. And then uh, the last layer, so the last one, So NL is number of layers. So for example, if we have, if we have four layers, then this is like our last layers. So this is uh, our last layers delta, okay. And our last layers delta is like, uh, um, it's basically our y hat two times y hat subtract y uh, times like f prime of z and l. So basically this is uh, two y hat subtract y of z and l indicator whether it's greater than zero or not. So basically this is a general formula and uh, um, and the idea is basically we uh, backtrack at every layer. And on Friday, uh, we'll learn how to uh, implement this. So uh, that's it for today.